This video is sponsored by Coatsync. Special thanks to Universal Studios Licensing. An observation pen. First things first, if you'd like to win a copy of this one, all you have to do is tell us your favourite Jurassic World film. Let us know down in the comments. And we'll announce the winner in a community post so that we don't get those people leaving reply comments. They're actually just trying to get you onto Telegram. There are some games that are perfect for the VR platform. Generally those that you're waving your hands around, like the classic Beat Saber. Jurassic World Aftermath Collection was one such game, however, it had one drawback. That being that playing it in VR did tend to make me feel a little nauseous. It was brought across to the Nintendo Switch recently, having been completely rebuilt from the ground up for the Switch platform. I was quite keen to give it a go, unfortunately we ran out of time, so it was pretty sweet when the publisher asked if we would cover this one as a sponsored video, and generally going over the gameplay mechanics and what it's like on the Switch, completely unscored, but still obviously free to say positive and negative things to give an overall idea of the game. My name's Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. Has life found a way on the Nintendo Switch, and how exactly does the VR DNA carry over to this platform? Well, let's find out. Yeah. The game will set you back £24.99 or your regional equivalent, has only a gigabyte download and will take around 8 to 12 hours to finish depending on your pace. And it begins when you're on a plane, which unfortunately is brought down by pterodons and crashes onto Isla Nublar. This as we know is where the Jurassic World theme park was, emphasis on the word was because it's now a complete wreck. The narrative is set between Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, with the story being voice acted by Laura Bailey and Jeff Goldblum. Try the virtual interface assist. Can you just While it's relatively simple with the main aim of trying to escape the facility, the voice acting lends itself to uncovering far more about what happened here and exactly why, with Laura Bailey leading you through the adventure, through your comm system, and essentially acting as your guide to try and help you survive, but also uncover all of those dark secrets. Get back to the ops room. Get safe. I'll set up the private channel from here. Finally. Having been on VR, you might be wondering how exactly this plays out. Well, comparisons will be made to Alien Isolation. That's essentially an adventure game with some action elements, but where there's an emphasis on stealth and trying to evade the enemies. Here those enemies take the form of various different types of dinosaur. Initially raptors and then um, those uh, spitting ones that got the guy in Jurassic Park. Dilophosaurus is it? And you'll have to deal with them in different ways. The raptors, for example, require you to evade them at all costs, hiding in vents, using the lean buttons to peer round corners, and squeezing yourself into a number of conveniently placed lockers, and what can only be described as an empty minibar. Handily, they're always empty, and once you run inside, you can close the door, locking out any pesky dinosaurs. If you find yourself undercover though, and they're on the prowl for you, simply hiding under a table might not be enough if they saw you go in. The raptors in particular are incredibly smart. The neurotoxin spitting variety are stealthy hunters. They'll try and sneak up on you from vents and drop down from the ceiling and this will usually be in some of the darker areas where shining your torch on them if you're fast enough will send them scurrying off into the distance. However, if you're not quick enough, they will spit that toxin all over you. You'll need to find a pipe or other water source and wash yourself down. The stealth mechanics, while relatively straightforward, work well enough. And you can bring up your current objective, which is shown in the corner of the screen, but there isn't a map that you can bring up, which would have been handy, but I think is in the game by design. Essentially, you have a main hub area, from which you then move on to the different sections of the facility. The sections are unlocked as the story progresses, and these are slightly maze-like, with vents that you can crawl through, multiple doorways, and something I always like to see, computer systems that you can hack into using a special pattern or other method, and then find out information or gather up passwords to help you reach other inaccessible areas. There are, as you would expect, puzzles in the game. They'll have you rotating the analog sticks to open valves, fetching parts to fix machines, or balancing the pressures, or while trying to avoid having acid spat in your face. The whole thing takes place from a first-person perspective. You can click the left stick in to sprint around, and you can walk and run, 
Although it would have been nice to have a toggle for the run rather than holding the left stick in, much of your time is actually spent slowly creeping around to avoid those dinosaurs. And you can change the sensitivities as well as the axis, and it was really nice to see that you could also change the in-game text size. At your disposal, you'll also have a few tools to help you avoid those pesky dinosaurs, such as one which can hack into computers, radios, door panels, to either create distractions or remotely unlock and access new places. Some thought has gone into the stealth mechanic here. Any noises you make will draw the attention of the raptors, but you'll find intentionally slow locking mechanics, such as copying the pattern on the screen, which would be fine if there wasn't something looking to quite literally digest you. Now, I've mentioned the audio, which is fully voice acted by an excellent cast, but isn't it nice to be playing a Nintendo Switch game that runs at 60 frames per second without ever dropping a single frame? It's buttery smooth in both docked or handheld modes, although there isn't gyroscopic aiming, which is potentially a shame you won't actually be shooting at anything. I think the overall artistic direction suits the game well. As far as what you're getting here, the collection refers to the main game as well as the DLC, which essentially added in some new mini games and completed the overall storyline. It's one that I would recommend playing in handheld with a set of headphones. The soundscape here is incredibly well done with directional sound enabling you to place the footsteps of a distant raptor on its way to find you, or the inevitable encounter with a T-Rex. It hits different when you got those headphones on. If you're a fan of slower paced stealth games, then this is certainly one to consider. I mentioned that the game is split into two parts. The first part is essentially predominantly involving those raptors, and if you've watched the original Jurassic Park, which hopefully you have, you'll remember the kitchen scene where they're creeping away from them. I think that's where much of the inspiration came from. Personally, I did prefer the second half of the game, as they start to use more dinosaurs, and it gives it a bit more variety in that regard. If you're a fan of the series, then you will very much enjoy the overall experience, particularly the voice acting and hearing Jeff Goldblum. Like him or loathe him, he really really does do that character well. The smallest event has the potential to create catastrophic change. And the musicality and orchestral scores across the board are quite impressive. If you've got a decent surround sound or directional sound system, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly where those noises are coming from, or if you've just sprinted, hear the sound of your own thumping heartbeat. Running really well and being playable by a complete wuss like me, although I did manage to get myself killed quite a few times, which thankfully only respawned me back a short while to the most recent checkpoint. As I said at the start, if you would like to win a copy of this one, let us know something Jurassic Park in the comments, we will announce the winner on a community post. If you would like to save money on any of these games, you can use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg to buy your eShop credit if you're in the EU or US regions. And if you like the Joy-Cons in the video, there's all the information in the description. Once again, it's a real honor for developers or publishers to want to work with us on their games, so thanks to those guys. To the rest of you, thanks for watching. To our Patreons and members for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!